the exciting parsha. I mean it very literally. What do I mean by an exciting parsha? So you go from Sinai, and you remember last week we spoke about Sinai, where Hashem warned Moshe, tell the people not to come up. And then again, he told them right before the event. And Moshe said, I already told them, Hashem. Now you got to tell them again. So we said that the appeal of immediate spirituality, microwave spirituality, you just run up the mountain, I'm with you, God. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Spirituality closest with God, the Vekut and Hashem is years and decades. That's how what we're here for. And Moshe, they're going to just want to run up. I've connected to God. No, it doesn't work that way. Fine. That was a, one of the prime messages last week. But if it is a kind of spirituality, we have spiritual experiences. A person has an amazing davening and is really meaningful. He thought of every word and it, wow. And then uh, he would love to have every davening that way, but it doesn't always work that way. But it was a great event. He goes to a sheer and like new insights. Wow. Rav Daron Peretz, the beloved leader of uh, Mizrahi, world Mizrahi, and <clears throat> whose son is was taken October 7th. And they found his blood by the tank, but they think he hopefully is alive. It's a horrible situation. <clears throat> and she wrote a book before this. He's been speaking a lot about what's going on and continuing the faith and moving on. He's, he's a real, one of the great heroes of our times. I don't know if they're on parrots, his brother Avi Parrots and the family's from the Shul, more Shul and in our area. And so he wrote a, a safer a few months ago, State of Israel from uh, our position to opportunity, just a magnificent book. And he writes there that he was saw a Bill Nagon commentary on Tanakh, and it was like, wow. And it's like a whole new worldview. I'm not gonna get into it now, that's not important, but the whole new worldview and affected him and it just colored his whole book that he was writing and it's, that's a spiritual moment you see a great shot a great parish a great sheer you're talking about the experience here uh the other day like wow wow on shmuel and the resurrection of shmuel by the the magician there what happened so you have great spiritual moments and i'm wondering if right after yitro the Torah is introducing us to another great anti counterintuitive spiritual moment. Do you know what that is? You go from Sinai. We're up there with Hashem. Okay, so we, go, we didn't go up to Sinai. God told us not to. Moshe told us not to. But it was an experience. It was a religious high. So you're going to go from the Aserah Sedivros in Sinai to what? To learning, to davening, to... Shabbos and Ta'afs of no, I'm Shabbos. What a great spiritual experience. That's what you're going to go to. Now, what do you go to? You go to Pashas Mishpatim, where you go ahead and you pay your worker on time. And you go ahead and on your business receipts and everything. You do everything according to your rub. And if he tells that you're a private tutor and he says you have to report it, whether here in the States, wherever you are, and he says, I know this, you have to be squeaky clean, everything's reported, Kadat, Kadid, whatever your rabbi does, he said sometimes touch the issues. How many private tutors are reporting all their income and not taking cash? But we're not going to get into what you should do, but go to your rub. That's what you should do. So talk about the laws of taxes. And no one sees. And when Yerav told you this and told you that, or I remember 23 years ago, actually it was only 23 years, so I had a Chevy Astro in Farakoy. That was an eight-seater. And then we upgraded when we came to Israel to Hyundai H1 12-seater. That was a nice one. I used to, you know, we started Darche uh, Noam uh, 15, 16 years ago. It's like a family, and others were involved. So it was a small little school in the beginning. And like for the first year or so, the old school started with like 23 kids, three classes. It was a cute little school. It's still a very cute school. It's a beautiful boutique school, Dachy I visit there all the time. It's beautiful, but it was really, really small. 23 kids. I used to stuff, don't so many parents. It's like at the whole school, we went to the Ashto, to the beach together. That Hyundai, it said 12, but I mixed it up. I thought it was 21, Cedar. I just, I made a mistake. Anyways, so. 
So the bottom line is, the bottom line is it was a big, big band. The first few weeks I had it, I'm, I'm still driving as if it was my Chevy Astro. So it was like late at night once I'm backing up in the parking lot and you hear, mm, you hear a little crunch and see the car behind me. And I'm assuming the fender and the lights that were broken must have been someone else. I drove away. Stam, chas shalom. So it's late at night. What do you do? Push it what you do. You leave a note, number, and your name. And you say, hey, listen, I backed in. It was like mom's minimal damage, but it was, looked like it was damage from me. And I said, this is what happened. I backed up. I held, felt a little boom, tiny fender vendor, and and that's it. So when you, yeah, cool. He cool. It wasn't that much. It wasn't that much. But when I go ahead and bang into the car, I'm not feeling great. Hey, I banged into the car. No. But when I leave the note and when they call and they pay, that's a great spiritual experience. It should be. Of course, the way I define spiritual experience is what? Anything you do that gets close to Hashem. And how does one get close to Hashem? We have a great formula. How do you get close to Hashem? What? Observing the laws. We have 613 spiritual paths, Hashem. And you follow it meticulously, meticulously, whether it's building the Megdash, bringing a Korban, having a great shear, seeing a great gra, Mishle, Pasuk, paying damages that nobody saw, nobody down here at least saw, and it was a Yetzirah, or paying your taxes when you could have done what's OSHA odds, add, ain't trick him, ain't stick him, right? Believe trick him, believe stick him, look at OSHA odds, no tricks, no sticks, just straight good prices, right? So you could have gone away with your trick him and your sticking on your taxes, you could have done this, you could have done that. Someone once told me an amazing gene genius hop where he signed some document. I said, like, it's lies, absolute lies. You know that, yeah, you know what I did was, I signed first when it was empty. Then I filled in what my make each year, this and that. So then, you know, I didn't sign on a lie. I signed and then I lied. Ah, beautiful, <laughs> lumdus, beautiful. And this is from, you know, a Bantora, like, whoa. So, but I have no doubt that his film was the most beautiful film in the world. And then that's wrong. Oh, nice assessor of around. So there's two messages here. Number one, that you are mocked on Mishpatim as much as any other law, because there could be a Yetzirah to be very careful about certain spiritual laws, about your tefillin and your lulav and your Hanukkiah and your all oh, this and your candelabra for Shabbos. You can be very careful. And the kasher of course, can have 18 hashkachas on the food that you eat, right? <laughs> Nothing less. Yeah, 18 high, so you'll eat and you'll live a long life. So you're going to do all that, but like paying my work on time and I'm a little bit tight this month and he doesn't have anywhere else to work. He's lucky he has a job by me. So I'll wait another month. You will borrow from every bank that you possibly can or from every fence you pay your work on time. So what? Yeah. That she works for a company. They don't always, don't always pay her on time. Yeah, each, each company has their own minag, so I need them. So that's wrong. It's wrong. And the, so there's two messages here. One message is, practically speaking, the first Pasha is Mishpatim. You better be as careful as Mishpatim as you are, but all the spiritual stuff you learned at Sinai. And two, two is that what? That that's spiritual. You should have a spiritual excitement. It should be a spiritual experience. When you go ahead and you pay your work, even more, because when you have your lulav and esrog, I paid three million sugar for my ad. I'm like, wow, see, what an esrog. It's so beautiful. It's a nice esrog. The whole show is perfect. There's no blemish. And so you get all that sipuk and you feel so good about it. I oh, feel good. It should be even more of a spiritual, spiritual experience when you could have paid the guy in a few weeks from now. You didn't really have much cash around. The cash flow wasn't going well. And, and you overcame that. You still made sure to pay your work on time. And you left that note for the damage you did. You should be on a spiritual high. Now, wow. Your house. What? You sold your house. How you yeah, that's right. Selling and that Chevy Astro. So I remember with the Chevy Astro, it was an absolute lemon. 
And after every few weeks, something went wrong. The music went wrong. It was leaking. Always something going on. Listen, there's a reason why, you know, 40, 50 years ago, we were talking about some call, you know, the top companies in America in 67 was, was the GM and Ford and AMC. And, you know, Japanese cars was a joke. If you couldn't afford, afford a real car, you bought a Datsun, for those who remember it, right? Uh, but now, uh, half a century later, Toyota's number one, all number one of these other cars, you know, they're struggling because it was, you know, they weren't careful. So, so yeah, you're right. So I was on a spiritual high when I even had the car was fine. I did not have any problems when I sold the car in 2001 to the people in Far Rockaway. I know, and, but still, just like every few months, something happens. I just gave them the whole, you know, the repair booklet, not pamphlet. I think it was a 6,000 page booklet. Found. <laughs> Anyways, it gave it here. Take a look before you buy it. They might, looks like there's some deep book with demons in this car. And you should just know. He took it to the mechanic and I said, oh, it's a good car from what I see. And then that was it. It's true because my neighbors, the Bounds, we were like one big family, my Bounds. They always felt like bittersweet because they always saw we were like one big family. It was very, very hard to leave them. And they always saw in down Reed's Lane, you know, the neighbor, you know, the one who sold, we saw them always driving the cars. We're like, oh, the price came back. No, it's not. It's someone else. So it was very sweet. But anyways, you're right. That was his personal high for me. That I handed the booklet. I didn't have to. Halakha didn't demand it. There's nothing wrong with the car. Yeah, but there's a weird history to it. Just give him the booklet and let him decide. You're right. So those are two messages. One about being t- practically careful. I remember I chased for Arquois in the years ago that maybe Mishpatim was right after Yitro for that reason. I'm just adding on the spiritual element. And not only do you have to observe it, it should be a spiritual high. It should be. Whatever spiritual high, it should be from every mitzvah that you do. And especially one that has more challenges to it. So... <laughs> Finding who belongs to. Correct. Correct. You're right. right. We all have our different areas of specialty. And just to add on to what you were saying, each, and you have those people that are very meticulous naturally in business, they're brought up with a great business ethic and honesty and all that. And Davening, Mari, Brochus might not be their thing. They didn't grow up that way. And then for them to like say, you know what? So good with business and so honest. Like, I'm going to go to Mari. I do my, I don't dive my, I, I dive my, I don't go to show what's going on. You know what? I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on changing that. And you do that. So we had a spiritual high. Any mitzvah you do should be a spiritual high, especially a mitzvah which was challenging for you based on your nature and nurture and background. Yeah. I think most of us are failing to grandparents. And I think I, I would probably when I was a parent, I should have learned more from my parents. They actually taught what they did. I remember finding a bird on the street. It must have been eight, seven years old. And I was so happy. <laughs> I'm running home and showing it to my parents. Wow. And did you? Oh, me, my father went knocking on the door. That's great. What a lesson. What Hina. Correct. I agree. So I totally agree. I agree. So it's very much nature. We draw our own nature and nurture. We're brought up for different societies or some societies, you know, the cautious and the dog is the most important thing in business, whatever, a little bit shaky and destroy, even with all the Hafka note going on and like destroying public property and just burning things because of your goals that you think justify destroying the city. So like you grow up in that society, just think of the kids growing up there where public property is just worthless, doesn't mean anything. And like, wow, that person is going to have to have, all, he, that's going to be his area. Can he go ahead and like, uh, rethink this. Like, this is the chinach I got, which is destroy for like, when you think there's a good reason. Like, wow. Each one of us has our little pekelach and our challenges. Okay. So now, a couple of, that's point number one and two. A, practically, Mishpatim is right after Sinai. So it's like, don't in any way look at Mishpatim as a second grade system. No way. As a second tier. It's not. It's right up there. And I'm just saying the spirituality, you should have a spiritual high. 
when you're careful. And then the third point is any mitzvah that's challenging for you. You say, I'm supposed to write any mitzvah, but it's for you, especially if there's something challenging and you worked on it. It's all in bias issues, relation with your name, whatever it is, whatever it may be. Okay, another famous Rashi Ayin Tachat Ayin, which of course is based on uh, the Gemara, that it doesn't mean actual take an eye for an eye. It means, you know, your payment, but there is a there is a uh, Rav Soloveitchik in uh, Kol Didi Dofek, he wrote in 1956. The voice of my beloved is knocking. And what did he write? He said, at times, we must take eye for an eye, literally. Whoa. And he's talking about fighting against Hitler, fighting against the Arabs who were taking the new form of Hitler when all the countries attacked us in 48. He says, I know, I know, I know the oral law quite well. I'm a little bit learned in that. It's like unbelievable. His speech was unbelievable in, in Yiddish and Hebrew and English. He was an orator. He was just bigger than anything. And it's accessible. You just Google, call to the, the fake, the voice of my love, Nach. It's a must read. Before you almost everyone has a chiv to read, call to the, the fake and the five addresses by Rather Rob. Anyways, he says there, sometimes we must take it literally. What he means to say, what he meant to say is, he says, I know the oral law is not. Means is we need to fight our enemies till the end, destroy them, the come of revenge, wipe them out. He'd be saying the thing right now. That's what he'd be saying right now. So I and by Tachanayin, of course, I, I doesn't mean literally, it means pay damage, pay damage for what you've done. But just the rub said, but don't forget the message behind it. It's written in a certain way to give us that push. Like right now, we need that push. Whether we're doing it right now or not, it depends on who you speak to. You speak to, you know, people who are against Bibi, they say, no, we're losing the war. We haven't done anything. We haven't had one victory in, in Hama, anything to put Bibi down. They're going to say, and other BB supporters going to say, what do you mean? We knocked at 17, 18 out of their battalion so far. We're making tremendous progress, and we keep on going. So it depends who you talk to. You'll find out whether we're doing the war properly or not. Or not. And uh, I really don't trust anyone on this because you just hear such extreme views. Unless you're a real, real, real military person and stuff like that. I, I don't know. You stop a person in the, in, in the room in your, in, your, in your bedroom. You're telling me that you know how you should run the war better than, you know, Bibi and, the, and Kalant. I'm not ready to accept that so quickly. But, uh, you know, if we are doing it properly, then that's Ayin Tachat Ayin. They did a number on us and we, boom, Ad HaSelf, no Rachmanis, and that's for sure. So the Rav stressed, Ayin Dachanan, he knows the halachic meaning behind it, but he also just stressed, don't forget the hashkafa behind it, to go ahead and be tough. And one final mishpatim point, so a little child goes ahead, a 10-year-old, and he sneaks into the store, and he takes a chocolate bar and eats it. Halachically, what's the halacha? What do you have to do? A child under chinach does damage. So the Mishnah Brewer talks about this in Yerusha Shabbos. He says, if the bike, he steals a bike, it's still intact. Obviously, you have to give back the bike. If you don't know where the bike is, he lost it. And who knows where it is now? It's broken, destroyed. Technically, he is under bar mitzvah. So technically, the basin can't make him or the father pay, technically. But in terms of chinach, you better go ahead and make sure he pays back. Mishavu's language is lift nimishur said then you have to make sure he pays back. It's how about his chinach and also whether the person chavad he should lose out. So just in terms of mishpatim, hamido raisa he's a kid he's not chayav in the payments, but it's a very 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 important mitzvah chinach to make sure, and you don't want anything to be held against him. And you know, based in Shamala, he knew better. He didn't know at that age. Just you don't want to get into that. So the mission was pretty hamor machma on this one. So I did that. I was I know I was under five because I was in Houston, and we went to a grocery store. And when we were in the car, and in those days you have seat belts, I was always on the back. You know. Yes, we were the, dancing and jumping around. Whatever. <laughs> we were. I, right? I think it was a package of gum. Uh huh. Wrigley's. I remember. Yes. I'm and spearmint. I remember the store owner calling me. Yeah, and what happened? My father saw it. And my father couldn't believe I did that. Wow. 
my father turned the car around. Good. Made me go back and apologize Good. to the manager. That's great. And hand it back. That's a lesson. You That's it. So it's like you both had some good lessons over there. It's great. That's great. That's great. Anyway, so just to summarize, so we have the ideas about Mishpatim being first from a practical standpoint. Be careful with those money laws. From a spiritual standpoint, that every law should be a spiritual. Everything that we fulfill, as you mentioned, every law we fulfill, every commandment, we're connecting to Hashem, it should be a spiritual experience. And three, the more challenging it is based on your nature and nurture, the more of a spiritual experience that you overcame it and did it. Then we mentioned Ayin Tachasayin, according to the Rav. He says, you know, of course we know the halacha, what it means from the oral law, but there's a message behind it. I, ideally, take out his eyes, wipe them out. And that message certainly should be, you know, applied now. My opinion, from the little I see, it seems like we are doing that. Yet to show we should be successful. And then finally, uh, a kid, a child in damage is Midor Raisi. He's not high. But if it's intact, which means you have to give it back. And even if it's not, it's a proper thing lifting truth and then to make sure you give it back for the receiver's sake and for the chinuch of the child as well. And find that Shemini din held against him in Shemayim. Anyway, that's a little bit about this spiritual parasha called Mishpatim. It should be a great spiritual experience this Shabbos morning. <laughs> okay. Everyone should be well. Take care. Bye-bye. But I'll take it anyway. Can you turn it on? Thank you.